notes and making comments every once in a while. Um, because there is so much physical contact in organomy, uh, it is made very clear to all of our trainees that there must be a categorical imperative, that there must be no hint of any kind of sexual process that passes between the therapist and the patient because the process itself is conducive to that kind of thing. In the United States, all therapists must have completed standard psychiatric training and all people who are certified in organomy must be certified in psychiatry. We treat all ages of patients from infancy to old age. Now an example of treatment in infancy. Um, a patient brings in her four month old infant who has gradually stopped eating, stopped sleeping, is crying all the time. I look at the baby, she's pale, She's uh, whiny, she has a pinched face, her chest is held, and I ask the mother, what's been going on at home? And the mother says she's had full-time work and care of the household duties before the infant was born. Now that the infant is born, she has all of her previous duties, plus exclusive care of the infant. Her husband does not do a thing. And I said, haven't you talked to him about it? She has kind of whined to him that she wishes he would contribute a little more, which had no effect. So I say, take the infant in your arms, which she does, and I say, now scream bloody murder. So she starts screaming, and the infant opens its eyes, looks at her, and the infant starts screaming with her. So mother and baby are screaming together. And of course, the infant is no longer pale, her cheeks are red now, her chest is moving now, the mother's chest is moving. Uh, the mother goes home, has the fight of her life with her husband, lays down the law to him. Thereafter, he contributes to the workload of taking care of the infant. The problem disappears. A story about working with a child. This is one of my nicest child stories. Little girl named Vicky. She has become increasingly phobic in recent months. Um, she started out needing a light in her bedroom at night, then she needed the hallway light lit, then she needed the next room's light lit, until the house has to be entirely lit at night now, and she's becoming increasingly agoraphobic. So Vicki comes into my office, a sweet, polite, bright, lovely little girl. I put her down on the couch, her chest is held, her neck is tight, she has a constant sweet Sunday school smile. <laughs> so we smile at one another and that doesn't affect her one bit. And then I press on her tight neck and she keeps smiling. And I say, doesn't that hurt? And she said, yes, but I know you're doing it for my benefit. <laughs> now this goes on for about four or five weeks. Like my hands hurt from the pressure on her neck and she will do nothing but smile sweetly. About the fifth week, we're doing this and suddenly I have drapes hanging right by my couch, which no longer hang there. Vicky ended the drapes. She pulls down the drapes, turns to me and says, drop 
dead, you rat. <laughs> and then, there was a song at that time, I'd like to get you on a slow boat to China. And she says, why don't you take a long trip on a slow boat to China? <laughs> and I get her to scream and cry, which she does readily then. She sobs her heart out. I hold her in my arms. The session ends. And my office is next door to my treatment room. I'm sitting behind my desk in my office, and she walks around, around my desk to where I'm sitting. She hugs me, and she says genuinely, thank you. And thereafter, gradually, uh, we had talks thereafter. Her family was as phony as Vicky was. Uh, they were ultra, ultra liberals who, when their oldest daughter started going out with a black boy, the family went crazy. So, like, falseness was the modus vivendi of that family. Uh, the treatment of adolescents, our general policy is to treat adolescents as little as possible because it's regarded as a time of hormonal furor and the adolescents have all they can do to handle what's going on in their world, let, let alone enter into an intensive dynamic therapy. So what we try to do is handle the immediate problem as simply as possible and send them back into their world again. And if necessary, they can come back later on when they're over the furors of adolescence and when we can do some more intensive work. The treatment of the aged is kind of like the treatment of adolescents. One does not do intensive dynamic therapy with old people. You try to handle the immediate problem and send them out. An example of that is the mother of, the, of a patient, a 78-year-old woman, who has just been through major surgery. And she came home from the hospital, took to her bed and each day strayed less and less from her bed until she refused to move from her bed. And her daughter was scared because she was just lying rigidly in her bed. So she managed to get her into my office and I saw the old lady is not breathing. Her eyes are in a fixed stare straight ahead of her and she is practically immobile. So I gently push on her chest to try to get her to start to breathe. Then I ask her to follow my finger, which she cannot do at first, like her eyes are fixed, but gradually she's able to do this if I move my hand slowly. And her eyes start to move a little bit. And First, passively, I move her extremities, her arms and her legs, and then she's able to move them a little bit. And she's able to walk out of the office a little easier than the rigid way that she walked in. On the second visit, she's kind of relapsed. She walks in the way she did the first time. We, we do the work again on the chest, the eyes, the extremities. And then we talk about her fear of death, because it's clear to me that she is using a very primitive defense mechanism, as if to say, if I appear immobilized, maybe the angel of death will not see me, and he'll skip over me. So we talk about her fear of death, which she admits to very freely, and that gives her a great deal of relief, having at least exposed it, and after about two or three sessions, she's moving about the house normally again. And that's in general how we treat old people. Now, psychiatric organ therapy is not for all patients. There are some people who come to see me 